Welcome again. Uh, Doug and I are going to talk about another old wives tale today and, and this has to do with stall speed and bank angle because oftentimes when we talk uh, with student pilots, maybe you see this when you give private pilot check rights, it seems that there is a dependency, a su supposed dependency between the bank angle and the stall speed. And if you look at the FAA's textbooks, they even have diagrams that show the bank angle on one axis and the increase in stall speed on the other. So there, there seems to be a relation, but um, as often it's not quite that simple. Yeah, well that's right. And it's not just the textbooks, it's in the pilot hand, operating handbook of many airplanes. You'll find a chart with bank angle versus stall speed. And that's an absolutely true statement with two caveats, and one is gross weight, obviously, mm -hmm. it has all that, and the other is um, unaccelerated flight. Right. Okay, well, I mean, once you in introduce the bank angle, it is accelerated flight, but it is uh, uh, under a very s narrow set of circumstances, is that true? And so, you know, the, the rule of primacy works. And because it's very simple and neat, and you put a little bow on it, we teach private pilot students that uh, if you're in a 60 degree bank, the load factor is two, and uh, so your, uh, your stall speed goes uh, up by, uh, square root of two is 1.41, and your stall speed goes up by 41%. And the only problem is that that's in a very narrow set of circumstances. And it's only by adding one or two more steps where we realize what we have to do to change the angle of attack that we can, you know, tie those all back together and give the student the knowledge that they under, need to have to understand that if you're increasing bank and maintaining altitude, the stall speed's going to go up. But you can absolutely increase the bank without increasing the stall speed. All you have to do is not pull back on the stick or the yoke. Mm -hmm. You know, what we say in aerobatic airplanes is the airplane stalls at any airspeed in any attitude. And uh, what that means is uh, that, uh, you know, I can take a P-51 Mustang, put the nose down to 250 miles an hour and start to pull a loop and over pull, and I can stall the airplane wings level at 250 miles an hour. I can stall it vertically. I can stall it inverted. I can stall it pointed straight at the ground and I can stall it again when I've returned back to level. And in every one of those instances, the wings were level. Mm -hmm. The, you know, the, the uh, uh, um, lateral axis of the airplane was parallel with the earth at all times. And so it is uh, load factor induces angle of attack. And when we exceed the critical angle of attack, that's when the airplane stalls. And if we would only take an extra few minutes to explain those three concepts instead of just the simple bank angle versus stall speed, uh, our students would be much better prepared for a long and happy career in aviation. And it, it's really about load factor, right? Because if, if, I'm, if I'm asking for a, uh, a certain load factor to, to curve my flight path, to change your flight path. To, to change my flight path. You don't uh, have to curve it, you change it. It could be curved in a yes, loop, yes, right? Yeah, that's that, correct. That, that yeah. Some, some acceleration leading, leading right. to a curved flight path. But any I, change in the vector of the airplane is going to require load factor in some axis. Right. And to, to get that, I need to, to create more lift. That's right. And that more lift can come from an increased angle of attack or from a high ASB, right? If I'm at the critical angle of attack, uh, then, uh, then I, I can't get any more lift. I cannot increase my load factor anymore. So the only way to get that load factor then is, is through, through more airspeed right, if, I want, if I want. Power, more. whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, another way to think of it is, uh, you know, if you use the bank angle chart, then at 90 degrees of bank, the stall speed's infinitely high. Okay, except, you know, you can fly ballistically. 
you know, just pull the nose up, roll to 90 degrees of bank, and you're throwing a baseball, the wing's not flying. Right. But we're at 90 degrees of bank. The wing is flying, it's just not generating any lift. And realistically, at that point, the fuselage would be creating um, some lift? It could be, but more than likely, in that maneuver, you're ballistic. Now, if you see a radical, high-performance aerobatic airplane that's flying down the airshow line, that's what know, I had in mind. Then he's flying on the fuselage yeah. and thrust and, and, thrust. and whatever. And it, you know, usually it's not totally, you know, it's like 85 degrees of bank or something and hanging on the prop and all kinds of dynamics are going on there. Another example is in the pattern. Okay, so uh, a lot of instructors are adamant that uh, students don't exceed 30 degrees of bank in the pattern because the stall speed goes up. Well, if you don't load up the airplane in that turn, if you just bank and let the air, let the nose fall through, you're not increasing the stall speed. Mm -hmm. And um, I would argue that while we should endeavor uh, not to exceed 30 degrees of bank with proper planning, um, use the bank angle that you need to execute a a good, smooth, clean pattern. And if you are banking, don't pull back on the yoke. Because if you don't pull back on the yoke, the airplane's not going to stall. This, the primacy of the stall speed versus bank angle causes people to uh, be reticent to bank the airplane when they may need to. And so, you know, then what happens is they get in the base to final turn, they get to 30 degrees of bank and they want to increase their their uh, turn rate, and so rather than increasing the bank, they push on the rudder pedal. Mm -hmm. And that causes the ball to go up. And when the uh, ball goes high on the outside, uh, now we're setting ourselves up for a classic uh, base to final uh, stall spin. From a skidding turn. From a skidding turn. And so a increased bank angle with less, with less back pressure to bring the airplane around is far uh, superior to pushing the rudder, ruddering the nose around in the base to final turn with predictable results. Yeah. Okay, here we are, we're on base, we're gonna turn final. We put in the bank, then we increase the rudder to speed up the turn. And we lost 1,200 feet. So to repeat that diagram that we saw in, in the textbook, that isn't valid unless I, I, I pull back on the stick in the turn to, to maintain, maintain level flight, level flight or, or it, at, at least maintain a vertical uh, speed that I have, unaccelerated flight. That, right? Yes, that's correct. If I'm allowing myself to accelerate downward, yes. I don't need that load factor. That's right. And then I don't need the higher speed to prevent a stall. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. So, uh, again, airplane stall at the critical angle of attack. There's, there's a, and, and, and load factor may or may not be directly re, uh, uh, related to the critical angle of attack. It's possible to stall an airplane, partially recover, and the airplane and, and reattach, it stops buffeting and allow the airplane to accelerate, and the speed is increasing, all right? Mm -hmm. You're going forward faster, and the angle of attack is staying, and you're one G, you're falling, and so, you know, here's, the, here's where you are here, and now you're going faster, but the, the airplane has downward inertia. And I can demonstrate this in a B-25. I've never found another airplane that I can do it in, but the B-25's got enough mass, and it's got a wide enough, and you can get it in the stall, and then you just, you partially recover, but you watch the VSI, and it's just winding up. And the airplane's flying. But your relative wind is yes. like this. And the yeah. airplane's falling like a brick and you're yeah. just sitting there and you have no awareness that it's happened at all. And it, it happens in jets too. And you know, the jets can fall out of the sky like that. What happened to the Air France 447? Which one's that? The one that from Brazil to Paris that crashed in the, the Atlantic. 
they stalled into the Atlantic Ocean. Oh yeah, but that airplane never recovered. I mean, that no. was, it was in the stall the whole time. I mean, the airplane yeah. was flying it in the stall, yes. Right. Yeah, that's essentially what happened yeah. to it. Yeah, but it was, you know, so they're way above stall speed. They don't perceive high Gs. You know, the airplane's just falling down at the critical angle, slightly below the critical angle of the attack. And it's accelerating and down, and it's an accelerating forward, but the angle of attack isn't changing. Yeah. It's at a fixed max angle of attack. And once you get that acceleration going, you don't have enough thrust to recover from it. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's conceivable that you would not, and it would require an astronomical amount of forward stick to get it's it all the way out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, to get it flying yeah. again. So, Doug, the point you're making is that uh, stall speed is a function of angle of attack and, and load factor, is that right? Yeah, so, I mean, stall speed is a function of angle of attack, period, okay? And we can achieve the critical angle of attack in any pitch or any bank attitude. Um, you can say almost definitively that uh, uh, load factor is going to be, or that angle of attack is going to increase with load factor. And as you increase the load factor, the angle of attack goes up. And we can do that whether we're wings level or we can, we can have a lot of load factor with the wings level or we can have no load factor with the wings 90 degrees to the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, it has nothing to do. And understanding that will um, help us you know, understand where we're at in the envelope, number one, and number two, failing to understand that will give us a full sense of security because we might only be at 30 degrees of bank but pulling hard and we can stall the airplane. And so um, I, I think, as we said at the outset, that we do a disservice to our students um, by, in their early learning, teaching them this chart of load factor versus, of uh, stall speed versus bank angle. All right. Thank you, Doug. I hope that makes sense and I hope it helps you. See you in the next video.